Hello and welcome to the first Hey, Why Isn't Tim on Camera episode of Tim Gray TV. I've been traveling extensively and very busy as a result, so it's been a little while since we've been able to produce an episode of Tim Gray TV, but I wanted to share a tip. This tip actually relates to a question that appeared in one of the Ask Tim Gray email newsletters that I publish every weekday morning. You can get more info on those at asktimgray.com. The tip related to a trick that I had shown at Photoshop World related to layer masking and specifically dodging and burning to clean up a layer mask. So let me show you the technique that I was referring to. In fact, I'm going to show you the whole process of working with this specific set of images. The idea here is that we're going to create a composite and along the way learn a variety of tips related to layer masking. The process will involve placing this macaque onto this cloudy background. I'm going to start off in Adobe Bridge, but I could also get started in Lightroom. I'll simply select both of the images. So I'll click on the first image and then hold the shift key and click on the second image so that both images are selected. And then I'll go to the tools menu and choose Photoshop followed by load files into Photoshop layers. That will cause those photos to be sent by Adobe Bridge to Photoshop and assembled into a single composite image. And again, the same process could be initiated from Lightroom as well. I just happen to be working directly in Photoshop at the moment. So now I have my image. I'm going to go ahead and create a selection based on a channel. I found that for this image, that works pretty well. So I'll go to the channels panel and then click on the thumbnail for each of the channels in turn, looking for which channel has the best contrast between the subject that I want to isolate, the macaque in this case, and the background. And the blue channel looks to be the best option here. So I'll drag the thumbnail for that blue channel down to the Create New Channel button, the blank sheet of paper icon at the bottom of the Channels panel to create a blue copy. This starts off with pretty good contrast, as you can see, but I want more contrast. Ideally, I want the macaque to be completely white and the background to be completely black. I'll go to the Image menu and choose Adjustments followed by Levels. I could also press Control L on Windows or Command L on Macintosh on the keyboard to access the Levels adjustment. And then I'll move that Levels dialog out of the way just a little bit and I'm going to bring the white point in to brighten up the macaque and the black point in to darken up the background. What I'm trying to do is enhance contrast again so that the macaque is white but the background is black. That's obviously going to be impossible in this case but I want to get as close to that ideal as possible but without causing all of that fur detail to disappear. So I'll go ahead and fine tune my settings there and I'll adjust the midtone value, that gray value as well. And that looks to be a pretty good result, all things considered. I've maximized contrast without losing too much detail in the fur. I'll go ahead and click OK to apply that adjustment. And now it's time to see the real trick that was the focus of a question in the Ask Tim Gray email newsletter. And that is to clean things up here with the brush tool using a special blend mode so that we're effectively dodging and burning inside of this layer mask. I'll go ahead and choose the brush tool. The colors are set to their defaults of black and white. If I simply paint with black, I'll adjust my brush size here just a little bit, and if I paint with black to clean up some of these exterior areas, if I overlap on top of the edge of the macaque, you can see that I'm going to create some problems there. I'll press Control Z or Command Z on the keyboard to undo. But now the trick, if I change that blend mode to overlay, now I'm able to dodge and burn. So painting with black, I can clean up these exterior areas and even if I bump up a little bit against the macaque, I'm not going to dramatically alter the detail there. I still need to be a little bit careful, but I don't need to worry too much about brushing closely to the macaque. I also don't need to worry about cleaning up all of the details. I just need to get a path around the macaque in terms of the outside. I'm going to press X on the keyboard to exchange foreground and background colors so that white is my foreground color. And then I'll repeat that process. Now, for our purposes right now, I'm just going to paint a path around most of the macaque here. I'm not going to worry about the bottom area of the image here. That I would probably use some other methods to clean up. But for now, we'll focus our attention on the macaque. And again, just cleaning up a path around the edge, just inside the exterior of the macaque, as it were, that outer boundary. 
and then I will use selections to finish my cleanup work. So I'll choose the lasso tool, in this case the polygonal lasso tool, and we'll start off with the black areas, and so I'll just click around the exterior of the macaque, I'll zoom out just a little bit so that we can see the edge of the image, and then I can continue clicking around that edge, and then back to the macaque itself, and as you can see, once I finish that selection, I now have a selection of the entire area outside the macaque. Currently, black is my background color, so I can press Control Delete on Windows or Command Delete on Macintosh to fill with that background color so that all of those exterior areas, all of the areas around the macaque, are now filled with black. I'll press Control D to deselect, and then I'm going to do the same basic thing here for the interior of the macaque, and since I created that path with that dodging and burning, I can simply create a relatively lazy selection. In a few areas here, I need to be a little bit more careful. At the bottom here, once again, I won't worry about the details. I'll clean that up separately from this initial process. I just need to create a selection of the interior of the macaque, and you can see that all of that painting with the dodge and burn technique, that overlay blend mode, has made the task much easier. Now I can press Alt-Delete on Windows or Option-Delete on Macintosh to fill that selected area with white. So again, for now we're just focusing our attention on that furry detail of the macaque. We won't worry about that bottom area for our purposes today. I'll go ahead then and hold the Control key on Windows or the Command key on Macintosh and click on the thumbnail for my blue copy channel in order to load that channel as a selection. So now I have a selection of the white areas of this alpha channel, which will soon become an actual layer mask, and the black areas are deselected. Those gray areas along the edge of the fur will be partially selected. I'll go ahead and click the RGB thumbnail on the channels panel to get back to the full color image, and then I'll go back to the layers panel. And now, with my macaque layer active, and with a selection in the image, I can simply click on the Add Layer Mask button, that circle inside of a square icon at the bottom of the Layers panel, and now we have the masked image. And so you can see that I've preserved that fur detail. So I used that dodging and burning to clean up my alpha channel so that I could use that as the basis of a layer mask, and the result is quite good. Of course, I'm sure you've noticed that we've got a lot of green fringing along the edge. Because that fur was translucent, we're seeing some of the original green background kind of coming through that fur. Let's take a look at a quick technique for cleaning that up. I'm going to add a new layer above our macaque layer. I'll go ahead and click the blank sheet of paper icon at the bottom of the layers panel to create a brand new layer. I'll double click on the name for that layer to rename it. We'll just call this Color Fix. And then I'm going to choose the brush tool from the toolbox. I'll make sure now to change my blend mode back to normal, make sure that my opacity is set to 100%, and then I'll move my mouse out over the image, and I need to sample a color that I'm going to use to replace the green. I'll use a color from the macaque, of course, and so I'll hold the Alt key on Windows, the Option key on Macintosh, and click inside the macaque to set my foreground color to that macaque color, and then I can paint along that edge. Now I'm painting onto that separate layer. You might be a little bit alarmed initially here as we're just obliterating the detail, but that's simply because I'm affecting the entirety of pixels below. I'm covering up underlying pixels with these sort of beige pixels that I'm painting, but I can only affect the color if I'd like to by changing the blend mode for my new color fix layer to the color blend mode using the pop-up toward the top left of the layers panel. Of course, now you can see that only the color is affected, but that effect is going into the background as well. To solve for that, I will simply hold the Alt key on Windows or the Option key on Macintosh and click on the line that divides the Color Fix layer from my macaque layer. When I do that, the Color Fix layer will only be visible where the macaque layer is visible because they are now in a clipping group. And so I can complete that process painting around to fix all of the green color on that macaque layer, and only the macaque will be affected, and furthermore, only the actual color of that macaque layer will be affected. So the key thing I wanted to show you today was that dodging and burning by using the overlay blend mode with the brush tool on a layer mask or on an alpha channel, but of course, we've covered a lot of other ground to give you a bunch of really great tips 
for advanced layer masking in Photoshop. Thanks for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you the next time on Tim Gray TV. Thank you.